the Council and the UN itself uh, are essential global instruments, as I've said. They were born out of the 40 most violent years in human history. The ultimate lesson, of course, is we need to be on regularly, uh, and that's being looked at. Uh, it does meet our national interests. The Council it contributes globally to the world, uh, and the world we want and need, and it's what others, including our closest partners globally and regionally, want and expect of us. I should say expectations of Australia were extremely high. Um, uh, only 13 countries who promised to vote for us didn't vote for us. We're still tracking some of them. Um, <laughs> but, and, but we had a very low failure rate, 7%, which is an historically low figure. Now, my point in mentioning that is it reflects the fact, many things, of course, but it does reflect high expectations of us, very high expectations of us, and we do know that almost all of Africa voted for us. Maybe four or five did, well, four certainly, maybe five didn't. That's unprecedented. From Western, because we belong to the Western group, uh, candidate, simply unprecedented. And that meant um, the expectations of us needed to, were there and we needed to fulfil them. When we went on to the Council, obviously we had gridlock on Syria. Um, and there were, by the way, only 500,000 refugees only. <laughs> 500,000 refugees in a country the same population as Australia, although they've now dropped by, uh, by, by uh, from 23 million to 18 and a half million. But the, um, uh, the uh, situation was you had half a million refugees, but the crisis was getting worse and worse. No prospect of breaking the political gridlock in the council. We said, well, what can we do um, to, to actually help make a difference? Well, it's getting food and shelter to people, of course. How can we do that? It's not getting across conflict lines within Syria. It's not getting across the borders in the way in which it needs to. We did a resolution which provided for cross-border access at uh, four border points. And to cut a long story short, this has never happened in UN history. This is a first. It's changed the way the UN can now approach humanitarian relief in the future. And we got the Russians and Chinese to agree. Uh, <laughs> terrorism was another um, major thing that we pursued, the Al-Qaeda committee. We turned it into a really living committee where we looked at analysing the contemporary threat. It had become not dormant, but a little bit uh, legalistic, focused just on legal processes. Ukraine, we were one of the strongest critics of Russia on this. Um, and then, of course, uh, MH17, which was a seminal moment for the Council. Um, you all know the story. I mean, the resolution was drafted, negotiated, uh, adopted in four days. This is historic. Uh, key partnerships, well, uh, the P3 thing were marvellous, and why aren't we there all the time? Uh, so that's nice. Um, the Russians don't like us being on the Council, but they say, oh, a worthy adversary. Um, we survived relations well, I think, with China during um, the membership. They would have a respect for us coming out of this. The, um, the assessment of us seems to be, and this is not self-serving, that, that we were very pragmatic, which we were, determined, absolutely determined not to lose our nerve, um, and it can be pretty rough in that council, very rough at times. Uh, we were influential, even pioneering, in bringing new things that hadn't been done before, and we were prepared to take risks. Uh, the lesson is that if you're determined and have a clear sense of what you want to try and do on the council, and then of course be nimble enough to do whatever needs to be done as crises arise, you can make a difference. Um, you can do things that permanent members can't and sometimes need doing, as I've indicated. Uh, we have uh, generated some diplomatic capital, increased standing and influence. I know diplomats always say this kind of thing, but it, there's no doubt that it's true that it will evaporate by next week if we don't continue sustained engagement in New York in everything to do with our legacy to ensure it's implemented, but also have a very strong agenda uh, in the next few years.